You see how I put the yellow brick road? Yeah, on I saw thing? that. I was like, yeah, the yellow brick road and everything. I'm about to sing. If I was yellow brick road. <laughs> I was like, oh, I need to put a yellow. This is called a yellow brick road. Let's really go down the yellow brick road, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so just from that, you guys know what this is about. So this series, this month's series is called The Yellow Brick Road. We're going to Oz. Okay, so this was inspired because I was watching The Wizard of Oz when I was trying to figure out what we're going to do this month. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I could take the yellow brick road and turn it into something that has to do with social impact businesses. And so we have done and so we will proceed. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about in this series is obstacles to avoid along the road. OK, because if you remember the story and if you haven't seen it, you should go watch The Wizard of Oz. It's a classic, man. So <laughs> <laughs> um, obstacles to avoid along the road, you know, when you're driving down the road, just like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, you got to drive for you and everybody else. So somebody might walk out, walk out in the road, not even watch the sign. A car is going to swerve in your lane. You know, all types of things can happen right? While you're driving on the road. So we're going to talk about some of those general things that you want to um, look out for. The second thing that we're going to talk about is lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, <laughs> right? <laughs> and these are poor programmatic planning because the money is in the programs. So if you have programmatic planning, it's going to be a situation of lion, tigers, and bears. Oh my, <laughs> right? And then the next thing we're going to talk about is you're melting, melting, melting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So these are effects of poor uh, programmatic planning on the infrastructure. So the first one, we're going to talk about what poor programmatic planning looks like. The second one, we're going to talk about how that poor programmatic planning can affect in your infrastructure of your organization. And it is big. And then the last thing we're going to talk about, of course, is another classic. We're not in Kansas no more. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we're not there anymore. So we're going to talk about understanding this is a business with real consequences, mm -hmm. real life consequences. And part of those consequences are called clank, clank. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about how that comes about. Right. <laughs> that one. That ain't <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody wants that. So, if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy B. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities. And I am Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success traditionally without the headache and hassle. But guess what? Obstacles, man. <laughs> <laughs> headache, hassle, obstacles, they all go in and stress. The same, <laughs> they all go in the same box, you know? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of organizations, Tracy, um, I think that obstacles can be avoided if they rethink them and and try to see the, you know, I know this is cliche too, even try to see the positive and try to, you know, <laughs> how we do this, but they will happen. Things happen mm -hmm. all the time. You know, um, it could, it could rain. I have AT&T internet service and if it rains really bad, I lost mm -hmm. internet. This, you know, to earlier today, my computer went black and I don't know yeah. what happened. You know, what, <laughs> what do we, what do we do? Um, to fix that, first of all, you, you got to always have a, a plan B. That's why strategic planning, I think, is very important. Yeah. So you can have options if there's obstacles, right? Mm -hmm. If there's something I can't get over, what's the next thing? Funding might be an obstacle. And, and people people think that, you know, I heard somebody last night who said, if you can't make money without money, you can't make money with money. Oh, I, I, I like thought, that. I thought about it. And I was like, you know, yes. I'm serious because... Most of the people who come to us, Tracy, whether that's nonprofit or for profit or whatever, they come mm -hmm. because they either want to make more money or they want us to help them to manage the money they have still to make more money, right? To get right. more money. But starting businesses, whether it's for profit or nonprofit, money is usually at the center of the thing. So this guy's listening to and he said, Well, if you, if you can't make money without money, you can't make money with money. And I'm like, you know, what does that really mean? 
Mm-hmm. You know what it means is 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 here. It's you know in, yeah, in your, it's, it's mental. If you don't it's know about that mindset, right? It's about your mindset. If you don't know how to turn around, everything's gonna be an obstacle to making mm-hmm. the money, right? Everything. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time to make money, right? right. I don't. I don't. I can't get the grant. I need a grant writer, so I don't have. So I can't do it. I can't. Or my board won't fundraise. All these things would are perceived as obstacles when it's basically just the way that you're thinking about it. So you mm-hmm. have to reverse reverse your thoughts around it. Yeah, definitely. Because there are going to be obstacles in the way when you're starting a business. I, we have obstacles on a daily basis. Every day. Listen, <laughs> whether it's in the form of a person or it's in the form of a thing. Oh, it's, like a thing. When, it's like a whole noun situation over here. It's like you <laughs> Yeah, there are obstacles that present themselves on a daily basis. I, you know, when I get up in the morning, I'm just like, oh, let today be a good day. I don't want to be bothered. And then you'll get an email and you're like, okay, here goes my day, right? So you have to stay focused because, you know, one of the things I think that derails people is shiny objects, mm-hmm. right? So you're driving down the road and you see this, ooh, you see a Tesla and you're like, oh, I want one of those. Or you see a G-Wagon and I want one of those. And you take your eye off the road for too long and then what happens? Boop, you're in an accident, right? And it's the same thing in business because you're so busy watching the house over there or the car or somebody who's walking down the street who you shouldn't be watching, right? And then you end up in an accident and the same thing happens to people in businesses. Mm-hmm. You have to stay focused. If you stay on mission, and we did a whole section on that, if you've been following us, you've probably seen it. Um, stay mission, mission centered. If you mm-hmm. keep towards your mission that leads you to your ultimate vision for the organization, it is hard to, um, it, it, it's easier, I should say, to avoid obstacles because you're like this blinders on. Oh, I'm not looking left, I'm not looking right. You are not going to distract me off this path that I'm on. So you'll stay on that yellow brick road. Right. Mm-hmm. And finally get to your destination. Mm-hmm. When you start veering off the yellow brick road and going on to some dirt roads, right? That is when issues happen. We want to stay on the yellow brick road because at the end of the day, it's going to lead you to your ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. And don't let social media fool you, y'all. Oh, you yes. <laughs> There's so too much glitter on yes. social media, right? And anybody can pretend on social media. Yeah, I could be the queen of I don't know where if I wanted to. I just gotta say so and dress it back apart. Right. <laughs> and green screen it, and I'm good, right? But mm-hmm. don't let that distract you. You can, you know, because you know, obstacles, distractions, like you said, Tracy, it's it's keeping a lot of people from reaching their destination in a timely manner because mm-hmm. there's things that, that could have been done before time. You know, you think about the Wizard of Oz story, first of all. It's like, look, look, Dorothy, go on up there to the and, and, and do what you got to do. All this skipping and stuff that you're doing, you know, whatever. This yeah. singing, all this singing and stuff, it's it's fun. But just go, just go ahead on. Go and do what you got to do and stop bringing everybody with you because you can't bring everybody with you. <laughs> you're picking up everybody along the everybody. way. Like, hey, let's go to the wizard. You know, go let's go see the wizard. No. And you know that you, you made me think about something because the story is almost like. She felt like she couldn't go by herself. Herself, yeah. Is it because you go by, or is it that you just want to take people with you? There's, there's mm-hmm. a difference where if you're, if I'm going to take you with me and you're slowing me down, there's mm-hmm. a problem because I could have got there yesterday. Yes. I could have already been back in Kansas. Mm-hmm. Fooling with you, um, Tin Man. You know what? <laughs> you know, I'm out here fooling with you, and I'm and I'm two days late for my appointment in mm-hmm. Kansas because I'm doing what you've been. You were already in us. Yeah. <laughs> you you were already here. No mm-hmm. one, you should have been going up there to meet the wizard. Mm-hmm. I'm not here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now I have to play savior and bring everybody else along this journey with me, then taking away. And I mean, it's not that we're saying to be selfish. It's just that sometimes you have to focus on you. You have to be right first. And we've talked about this before, Ty. Mm-hmm. You have to be right with you first before you bring other people along the journey, because you will never get to your destination if you're picking up people along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you are driving and you're an animal lover, you pick up every dog that you see, when are you going to get home? (laughs) When are you going to get home? (laughs) Honestly. And then when you do get home, are you going to be able to feed all the dogs you picked up along the way? That is what you want to say. And I'm not, if, Please don't even drop nothing in the comments while I'm talking about people like dogs. No, I'm just making analogies. <laughs> you know it's coming, right? I just, it just dawned on me. Like some, 
somebody's going to come out here and be like, ah, no, <laughs> that's not what's happening. I'm just making analogies as to scenarios. When we talk about obstacles, any type of obstacles, when you're trying to get to a specific mission vision, right, mm -hmm. is you cannot pick up everything along the way. You have to stay focused. Be good mm -hmm. first. Now, if you're a millionaire and you got a stockpile of dog food in your um, garage, then yeah, maybe you could pick up 10 dogs and bring them home. You know, mm -hmm. but if you don't, if you're just barely trying to make food for yourself, mm -hmm. why would you do that? Mm -hmm. That's you the know, whole point. I think we're programmed backwards, you know, for that. Like you're supposed to give, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to, you know, if you if you pick up all the dogs on your way and it, and you don't get home to midnight, now you're tired, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you're going to do when you get home, you're no longer going to do that because you got to take care of the dogs or you want to go to sleep or whatever. And and you can't work on your thing till tomorrow because you put all your stuff. And then tomorrow comes because you still want to be a savior. You see cats. And mm -hmm. you know, if you got a whole zoo and the zoo wasn't even your mission, you was trying to open a tire shop. Mm -hmm. so you got, right. So you exactly. You're off, mm -hmm. right? And then you're miserable. Mm -hmm. Then you're miserable. Right. So avoid the obstacles. Go take care of yourself first. Make sure that you're good. So whatever yourself is, whether it's your business, your personal self, if you're looking to start a nonprofit because you were homeless at one point in time, do you have home security right now? You know, yeah. are you living in your own home? Are you secure in that home? You're not one paycheck away from being evicted. Before you start a nonprofit to help other people, you can go volunteer at an already established organization to help those people. But starting your own is not the right thing to do at that time. You would not believe how many people get angry with me when I, I know. I'm like, I know. Not ready yet. Well, this is what I'm supposed to Maybe you are supposed to do it, but you're not supposed to do it right now. How can you say you're providing shelter for somebody when you don't have shelter? Mm -hmm. how, can you, how can you feed people when you're hungry? Right. Right. Wait until mm -hmm. you're eating. When you're eating well, now you can you, the overflow. You can't give them right. some of that. Right. Go volunteer where you don't have to put this much of your energy into that thing. You use your energy to get yourself to the next level. Mm -hmm. And you go and work at their organization. Go volunteer for them. Go do whatever. And and then you come back and do that later. Yeah. If you want if that's what you still want to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that is basically how you avoid the obstacles that will derail you from your mission and prevent you from getting to your vision in a timely manner. So come on back um, next week and we'll be talking about lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Oh my. So, <laughs> all right. Until next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>